Tracy, welcome to Vicarage Road. It's fantastic actually to be here. It's my first time in this ground. Oh, is it? It, it is, for a great cause. Are you coming to the game? I will be coming to the game. Hopefully it's a win for us, sorry to say. So you're from Chelsea Pride. Um, how can you set it up and when did you set it up? Okay, well, we are coming up to our fifth birthday, which is actually the end of this week. So we've been going for five years. Um, and yes, there was just a call out from fans to have a, a, a group that obviously covers the LGBTQ community, um, which is fantastic. Um, and we've had a brilliant backing from our, from our club um, and we've just grown from strength to strength. But yeah, it's been a long five years. Uh, five years have flown though, I have yeah. to say. Uh, Proud of about a similar uh, age of four years old now, I think, and we launched against Man U. Still yet to win a Rainbow Laces game at Watford, so... Oh, I, love, I, I like hoping, that stat. I love that stat. I'm That's great, for, it's fine. I'm hoping for a turnaround in fortune against Chelsea. The work that, you know, groups like ours do is so important because there still is a lot of intolerance in the game. It's just quite disheartening to see, I think. I think as well, on the back of COVID, we've come back into football and discrimination has gone up a level. So our work obviously becomes a little bit harder at the moment, but it's prime time to obviously re-educate people uh, on what matters. 100%. I mean, since uh, the season started, I think we've had an incident of discrimination at every game reported uh, via the uh, week sort of campaign at Watford. It's just, it's just really disappointing to hear that. And it's not just homophobia, it's sexism, ableism, racism. It's just, it definitely feels like things have taken a bit of a backward step. And I don't know exactly what the cause of that is, if it's just frustration over from the past year, if it's just people feel a sort of sense of entitlement to say whatever they want anymore but it just feels like yeah it's so sad that's creates such a unwelcoming environment for like you know everyone from a minority it can be such a distressing thing to hear that like yeah i mean i've heard people from many of our other fellow groups who've had fans walk out of grounds because of what they've heard that shouldn't be happening in this day and age in football education is definitely the key yeah unfortunately we've had the same thing with uh, a couple of proud hornets members which is just Especially when you know it's you know you spend good money to come to a game like it's something that should be for everybody. It is a place that you know you come together with people that you think are you know your sort of, for lack of a better word, like a sort of family because you know you're a fam we're a family club here. It's like something we're famous for, and so to hear that people are being made unwelcome there, it's just it's it's angering, upsetting, like frustrating. It just makes me feel a bit just disappointed. I never thought I'd, I'd have to say it about Watford, but hearing how it's got, it feels like it's got worse recently is just such a shame. As, as I've, I've always said, I've said it on so many sort of like interviews that I've done, like we've got the most famous gay man in the world, his name adorning one of our stadiums. To, and like we, we were one of the teams that got a lot of the abuse in the sort of, you know, 70s, 80s, like Chelsea did, yeah. like Norwich did. Like we were one of the teams that was sort of, a lot of people's vocal point for that. And so to have our fans doing that, and like it's just, it's just, stamping all over everything I think Elton John's done for this club, like his legacy here. You have no respect for him if you say any of the things that have been said by these fans. And obviously we come back to that one chance that obviously is, is the big chance at the moment that people are talking about and that's the, the Chelsea Rent Boy chant or just the Rent Boy chant but predominantly it has our name in front of it and as you mentioned it comes from the 80s. A lot of people get the history of the chant wrong um, and basically, yes, to the gay community, to the LGBTQ plus community, it is homophobic and people need to start realising it is. Yeah, like it's just, although the CPS might come out with a, you know, a judgement and say that it isn't a homophobic thing, that is not listening to the LGBT community. Like it is so ingrained in homophobia, that word, that it's... I just don't understand why you know people think it's okay to say why the CPS think it's okay it's okay to say like that blows my mind. Once that rule comes in, if we can get that rule changed, then we can actually start saying to fans, okay, now you can be prosecuted for using this language. Education's key. We need to stamp this out. I think that's a, you made a really good point. That education is such a key part of it because I think with the rent boy chant, a lot of people who are younger don't know that sort of historical relevance of it. Like a lot of people you see on Twitter say it's about Roman Abramovich just buying loads of players, which is, you know, even if it was, it's still an offensive term. Like it doesn't make a difference. I'm like, that doesn't make it okay still. That's what I find so frustrating about it. I guess, you know, that's where things like the Rainbow Laces campaign do come into quite a lot of, you know, it does sort of put it into the public attention. Like, do you think it's working? Do you think they need to do more or less? I think the Rainbow Laces campaign is fantastic. The, my problem is it's only two weeks of a year. 
Personally, for me, these campaigns need to be running throughout the year. I don't just want to think, OK, for two weeks, we put some rainbow laces on. It's all fantastic. We do this at the back of our ground and the colours look amazing. But then the message is forgotten. Unfortunately, I'm not gay for just two weeks of a year and nor are our fans. And yes, we need to we need to make sure that all clubs, be it anywhere on the pyramid, are actually doing work tirelessly for all the EDI work they do. They, it just needs to be continuous. So what about when your fans, when sort of one of your fans want to sort of say to the club, I can hear homophobia, racism, what do they do? Well, we've got a number uh, you can text in, which uh, will go straight to a steward up in the, I think, I believe back of the uh, Elton John stand, and a specialist unit will come and to where you're sitting, and you sort of say where you're sitting and what you've heard, and try and identify who has said it. And then the further steps are taken from there. Obviously, that's the e it's easiest to do it when you're at the game, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable, I'm sure, I'm sure they will still, you will still be listened to, and they will do the best they can afterwards. But it's easiest to deal with it at the time. So if you text the number, especially if you don't feel comfortable with addressing it yourself, but we need that. There can't just be someone from the community. There can't just be, you know, somebody from, you know, a non-white person or a gay person or a disabled person. It has to be allies. Like that's there's much more of you than there is of us. So it really is important that you show solidarity with everybody because otherwise these campaigns will just fall by the wayside. Players on the pitch, if they hear anything they don't like, being able to speak to a referee and then that be done. It's not just work that needs to be done in the stands, it needs to be done on the pitch yeah. as well within teams. And I think we always hear as fan groups, when is there going to be a gay male football player come out? I think I'm tired of hearing the conversation. We hear it constantly that there's going to be a gay man come out. There's going to be gay men already in football who have not come out for a very good reason. If I was walking into a football stadium right now, I don't think I'd want to come out. When you hear chants, you hear a whole away ends singing the Chelsea Rent Boy chant, I would feel very uncomfortable being on the pitch. For players to want to come out and need to come out, and they should come out because being their authentic selves is actually going to make them a better player, I think, in the long run. We need to change the attitude in the stands. Change the attitude in the stands, make it friendly, eventually a game or player will come out and hopefully, like what's happened, they will get backed fully by, by their club and by fans. And if we can't turn every fan, then education. And if they still can't be educated, then I don't think they should be in football. But I mean, obviously we're here today predominantly because obviously it's the Rainbow Laces campaign and our game is against each other. Um, we're going to win. I'm, I'm fully confident. <laughs> So we're going to, okay, so we're sat here, this is going to be slightly embarrassing, we're going to do a score prediction between ourselves. I think we're going to beat you 3-0. I've got the 4-1 in my head when we beat you then um, in Harry Griffith's first game, so I'm going to, at home, so I'm going to say we'll win 2-1. Oh, you're not scoring against Mendy. It's just not happening. Mm. I think I think Sar might score against his teammate. I think I think he'll know how to get the best of him. I think we'll I think we'll be okay. I think we might win. It's going to be a fantastic Rainbow Laces campaign. Not just us, but all of the other groups as well. Pride in football, football v homophobia, kick it out. They're all doing incredible work. But the best of luck and the sorry. I hope you lose. Well, same to you. <laughs>